Hi, Jürgen. Just thought we'd start with an injury update, please. Uh, first of all, how serious is the injury to Costas? Alison said he'd be back soon, this weekend too soon. And any potential return dates for Thiago, Ox, James Milner and Shakiri? Um, so, yes, we had two days ago a game. And um, after the game, we've obviously had um, some nickels, I would say, but um, can be more. We have to see. The, 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 the diagnosis is not finally done. Um, Costas, we have to see. Diogo, we have to see. He got a, a, a knock as well. Um, yeah, that's it from the game, I think. Um, apart from that, Slay um, is in normal training. Doing, they're doing parts of training now for a week or so. Um, it's now in full training and we will see. So the situation probably demands to involve him as soon as possible. But I don't know if the weekend is that moment already. Um, so nobody else is coming back, I'm afraid. Okay. You spoke um, as well about being fully focused for Fulham. I just wonder, the fact that you have Spurs in midweek to come as well and things are so tight at the top of the table, does that help sharpen the focus even more so for this weekend? I hope none of our players will think about Tottenham when we, when we are in Fulham, to be honest. Um, so the situation is like it is on the top of the table, everywhere pretty much in, on the, ta in the table that there's no, not a lot of distance in between. So we know that it, I don't have to, to tell the boys constantly. Um, we, we, Fulham is a really good football playing side. Yeah? So, um, and was not the, the performances they, 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 they showed were not all rewarded with results. Let me say like this, but the fight for, for the fight for staying in the league is a tight one as well. And so um, each point um, helps us and they will go for everything. And if you let them play, they will play. And the more you let them play, the more you have to defend, the more you have to defend, the more you have to run. So all these kind of things, you have to be really spot on in this game. Um, and um, since Scott Parker took over there, it's a constant um, development to see there and um, getting promoted from the most difficult second league in the world is is a, is a is a tough one and he did that as a pretty young coach actually and um so he's doing a really good job and i respect that a lot and now we go there we have to see who is available and then we have to we will try again our best you also spoke in midweek about being unsure if you were asked now as to whether var would be a good idea i just wonder now jürgen what do you want to see happen with that system Look, this is one of the of these things which I don't like. I, I got asked we we, we play in Michelin. Uh, it was freezing cold. We have three or four I don't forgot it actually um, decisions, and all together it was for sure ten twelve minutes, and it was really cold on Michel something like that. And of course, with all the things how how it's dealt with it now um, here here in the country and the Champions League was not much better to be honest. Um, yeah, why would anybody would somebody say? Come on, let's. That's brilliant. Let's stay like this. It's a, we wait always, and we, we stop celebrating after goals and wait constantly about everything. We we have milli, milli, less than millimeter offside decisions, stuff like this. A lot of things are, are not like they were before. That's the truth. But I said, when when um, when when it first came up, um, the idea of VR, uh, I was I was rather in favor of it, to be honest, because I thought yes, right decisions would would be nice if we could have right decisions. Not sure we all thought it through. Um, um, properly and how long will it take to get the right decision? How much will that take away from a game which we lost before? So that's all true, but I, I, I don't have expectations. So to be honest, it's what I don't like about it. It would be really nice if, if other people, and I mean now you, have an opinion about it as well. So, and, and write it down and don't make only the stories with what we say. Because, yes, I said it once like this, now I think it's I might have been wrong, but I don't know 100%. Um, it's nothing to do with the tight decision against us. It's a bit with the, it's in general, um, a few things are not like they were before and they were better before. And I think if you change something, there should be just improvement. And that's for sure not the case. And yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Andy Sixsmith with two questions and then Ian Kennedy next. Hey, Jürgen. Um, Given how hectic the schedule is, how relieved are you that you can put the Champions League now to bed until February and, and focus on this demanding Premier League schedule? 
if you could tell me where we could put in Champions League in now from now on, um, there's anyway no time. We have exactly the same schedule like before. Surprise, surprise. So um, for us, nothing changed. Just the name of the opponent, the, the trips changed. But imagine we would have we would have to play still Champions League. <laughs> it would be really funny. So nothing changed for us. Um, the only the only fair thing is now that now all teams play from now on every three days. So all the other teams um, have to do the same. And that's in a Champions League, by the way. The, as well the case, but now it's in Premier League for all the teams. But there's nothing to enjoy in the moment um, with, the, with the injuries we have and, and stuff like this. It, it was a proper fight so far and it will stay a proper fight. That's that's it. And just uh, one on Fulham as well. After a, a slow start, you mentioned there that they've had performances, but not the results. Do you feel that Scott Parker's side are growing into the Premier League with each passing game? Definitely. Definitely. Not all, but that's not. I didn't analyze for, for a game. I don't watch um, now. We have matched day 10. I didn't see all 10 games, but I saw obviously um, now the last three. And um, yes, of course, they're growing in. So, um, and that's a normal process, by the way. Um, and when you see then um, the number of points in, the, in, in that area on the table, it's not that somebody is already out of the race or something like that. They, are, they are all have all uh, the chance to stay in. And, and, and Fulham is even in a, in a slightly better position than others. So um, they will. That means in this in this situation, even the results were so far not perfect, you can still have be confident and can have confidence. And um, so that's what we expect. And um, so it's a tough one. Um, and yeah, with supporters, I think, yeah. Yes, in London, yes, still, still, yeah. So, in 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 with supporters, we felt a few a week ago um, the 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 benefit of having our our crowd there. So now Fulham, um, small stadium, two thousand people in, uh, will um, there will be a proper atmosphere. So we have to be ready for that. Ian Kennedy and then James from Talksport. Ian first. Hi, Jürgen. Um, you touched on it. Um, you touched on it uh, just before about how uh, tight the top of the table is at the moment. I think before this weekend, there's only seven points between the top ten. Um, so, are you, in a way, I know there isn't a much, much to enjoy because of the injuries that you've had this season, but it is a different season. Uh, do you almost relish the challenge of being in a bit more of a scrap this season with the other teams, a battle compared to the last couple of seasons when it's been you and Man City mostly? Look, um, I'm not the most experienced guy to, to, that who can tell you how it is when you have a big gap in between you and other teams. But last year, for whatever reason, it was like this. But before a game, it's exactly the same like always. You want to win this game because it's not about you think, oh, we have 20. We are, uh, there's a gap of 20 points between us and them. So, so we might... Um, play with six, six or 70 percent it's not like that so uh we were really we felt under pressure from ourselves last year and that's the same now that didn't change we don't you don't look at other teams where they what is it that's much too early in the season and in the, in the last match day is important where are the others and where are yourself before that you just create a basis um, for the rest of the year and uh, that's where we are still in um and so whichever situation is there now outside us we cannot change so we don't really, um, we are not focused on it. We just try to win the next game and that's difficult enough. And can I just ask you about Leighton Clarkson, who, who played in midweek in Europe? And I know he's played a couple of games um, for Liverpool in his career, but I just wonder how much confidence he will have gained from playing in Europe, but also the fact that he played the full game, you know, he, he, 90 minutes. I mean, psychologically, that must give him a huge lift. Oh, with all interruptions, it was for sure more than 100 minutes, but he was on a pitch. So, um, yeah, it was a really good game. It was a really good game for, for a boy of his age group, um, first Champions League game. <coughs> so he's, you can't imagine how much better he is than he showed that night. But that's what I say on the first, on the first, for a first game, it was a really good performance. But it, for him, it's only the start for hopefully a long, long career. A lot of steps to go, a lot of things to improve. But for the first one, it was really good. Thank you, Ian. James from TalkSport, then Carl Markham from Press Association, then Neil Jones from Goal, and that ends the open section. Carl. Oh, sorry, uh, James. James from TalkSport. Apologies. <laughs> Cheers, Matt. Jürgen, from the outside, there seems to be still a bit of uncertainty about the future of Gini Wijnaldum, but his performances on the pitch don't seem to have wavered. Is that a sign of, of what a top professional he is with, with all the talk going on outside of the club? Yeah, absolutely. Never doubt about uh, the, 
the character of, of Gene Van Alden. So he's here now for four years or so. I'm not 100% sure for a long time. Played the majority of the games since then. Helped us a lot in all the things we achieved since he's here. So, um, yeah, top player, top character. Fantastic. Uh, Carl Markham, Press Association, then Neil Jones, and that ends the open section. Hi, Jürgen. Hi. Hi. Just to go back to, to the, the interest rate, you said Ox, Ox might be coming back. I just wondered how, how welcome a return that is for you and for him. Obviously, he's been out since, since before the start of the season. That was long, eh? Unbelievable. So um, I still remember the situation, how it happened in training. So phew, normal challenge and then one gets up, the other not. So that's really hard. Um, tough time for him. But um, the sun shines for him already for a, for a month or two since he's doing all the necessary stuff in rehab, but is on a pitch with the ball. Now he's with the team. So all these steps, it's great. It's great for him. It's great for us. Um, um, but again, we cannot and will not rush it. But when he's long enough in normal team training, then of course he becomes an option immediately. And um, that's good. Absolutely good. And you usually tell us when someone is close to returning, but you, you didn't say that with Alison. So I'm just wondering where we are with, with his return, how long you think it might be? Oh, Ali, sorry, then I, for, I forgot. I forgot Ali. Probably it was not intentional. So um, yeah, Ali will train today. That's what I've heard. I came in and we had direct press, so um, all the meetings um, are after that. Um, and yes, Ali is will train, and if he trains and all fine, then he can play. Okay. Final question in the open. Neil Jones, if we're going to have hands up for the first embargo section, which is the daily papers coming as well. But Neil, to finish. Hi, Egan. You okay? Yeah, I just want to ask about yeah. Curtis Jones. Um, you said recently that his personal development has impressed you even more than his, his football development. I just wondered specifically what is it about about that, that that's been so impressive for you? Because he does seem to have gone past the point where he's a, a young talent and now he is you know, part of the first team. Well, he's a young talent still. Um, it's not fair that we don't judge him like that. But when you speak about the, the, the kids, then it's like it happens that you forget Curtis. Um, but it's, um, how can I explain that? So when you are the outstanding talent in all your age groups, what Curtis obviously was since he's here at Liverpool, then it's completely normal that you, that you develop a specific personality, um, very confident, very, very confident and nothing can harm me or hurt me or whatever, these kind of stuff. And that was the kid who came in here. That's completely normal. It's not his fault. It's just normal. Um, and then you realize, um, in the next moment that you, that a lot of really good players are now around you when you've joined the first team, they are, they are similar, good or better. Most of them are better because they are more experienced and all that stuff. And that's, um, the situation where a lot of talent struggle to adapt to that from being the prince of whatever team um, to uh, a normal player in the next team, um, they struggle. And, and Curtis never struggled with that. He really, and that's because of the incredible leadership of our of our more experienced players, because they showed him exactly the pathway, showed him what, what he still can be and where he has to adapt and all this kind of stuff. So um, that's only on the football part, but then when you are in the, when you go to the first team, have some um, success there, and he had big success. He, has, um, he became English champion last year, um, was involved in the Champions League final the year before, all this kind of stuff. Then a lot of challenges are waiting out there for you. And again, he passed that as well. So um, he's in a good way. I have to say in a really good way. And if it stays like this, the future is bright.